Welcome to the Solemn Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. Today we have yet another all-time high. I think at this point I am never gonna talk about the fundamental ideas anymore because every single day I have to report on these crazy auctions. Kidding aside, obviously on this channel, if you're interested, we do cover actual in-depth analysis and general ideas. And so if you're interested in that, be sure to like and subscribe and go check that out. However, today, yes, we have another all-time high. We have two auctions ending at about the same price for Exodia's head from LOB first edition PSA they both ended at $4,500. So anyone want to go like, oh, it was probably a false auction or shill bidding or blah, blah. Well, two different sellers from different countries, you would have to really do your best with some mental gymnastics to think that this is all fake. So yes, I've covered this before. It's once again one of these iconic monsters. It is our beautiful baby Exodia. And it's not hard to see why, once again, if you are gonna ask your typical Yu-Gi-Oh collector, fan, or even investor coming from the sports card world, which is happening, generally, they're gonna go for the iconic monsters. You know, you have your all-time fans who generally go for the iconic monsters because that's just what they grew up on, you know, Everyone knows Exodia, Obliterate, and then Blue Eyes White Dragons all get fucked and like, everyone knows that episode. Everyone knows the memes, everyone knows that. So you have this tier list, let's say, of monsters everyone knows. It's your Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, Exodia, Red Eyes, God Cards. Those five, everyone knows. Even people who don't really know Yu-Gi-Oh! just know probably Blue Eyes and Exodia from all the memes. And so obviously, if you then want to put your money into something that is safer, and again, we're in the world of speculative assets, anyone telling you that there's any guarantees whatsoever is lying to you. But if you're gonna go for something that's not a penny stock, as some people would say, it is probably gonna be your Blue Eyes and your Exodia. And so 4,500, yes, it's high, and maybe it'll dip a little, you know, the market could cool down. And again, you can't have exponential doubling every month like we have seen. But if anything is gonna win in the long term, it's probably gonna be this Exodia, the blue eyes and so forth. And so 4,500 is a lot, but within a few years, I think this will be considered cheap. It is what it is. Now, I quickly wanted to go over two more auctions actually that also had all time highs because again, I don't want to consistently make all-time high videos. It would get very boring very quickly. And also, I don't want to attract just price hype beasts on this channel. Overall, I want this channel to be a hub of rationality. If every single video is all-time highs, blah, 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 it doesn't really send the correct message, let's say. So I quickly wanted to put the other two all-time high auctions into this video so I don't have to make other ones for them, and then we can go back to the actual more in-depth analysis. Once again, if you're into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel. So we had our Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning from IOC, Invasion of Chaos, PSA 10 First Edition, go for $3,000. This is not one of your all-time iconic monsters for the typical dual monsters fan. It is not your blue eyes. However, if you talk to anyone who actually played the game, back in those old days. This is iconic. It's not like your typical casual Yu-Gi-Oh fan knows much about this or the Chaos Emperor Dragon, but anyone who played knows how broken these two were. And so yeah, BLS going for 3000 just isn't that surprising if you look at it in that perspective. It is just so broken. So insane back then, of course. Right now, not really. Though, some Chaos decks, even now, dare to run it because of how good it actually is of a card, even in today's meta. Now, of course, it's no longer the top tier or anything like that. But you know, after, what, 16 years, maybe it's normal that Power Creep finally catches up to this insane beast. So, Chaos Emperor Dragon, they had to errata completely. This one, they, they let come back. But so yeah, I can see Chaos Emperor Dragon and this guy doing well amongst the Yu-Gi-Oh! player crowd. Not so much the very nostalgic collector only, though of course those could also be interested because they remember the card, but you know, it's not in the same league, 
let's say, as a blue eyes, in my opinion. But so yeah, I'm not surprised. I don't think it will be the most record-breaking card ever. I'm pretty sure blue eyes is gonna be the one. But you know, it's a really cool iconic card for people who actually played the game. Next up, speaking of iconic cards, we also had Monster Reborn actually selling for, I believe, an all-time high, but I'm not sure of that. Maybe one sold higher, but I don't actually think so. So we had an LOB, once again, Legend of Blue Eyes. If you're not catching up yet, if you're not getting with the system, LOB is the first set, it's the base set, it's the alpha, it's the first. If anything is gonna break records in this game, it's gonna be prize cards and LOB. Obviously sets after that are also great, you know, your MRD, MRL and so forth, but LOB is our base set if you want an analogy, let's say. So for $3,000, well, 2,995, we had a Monster Reborn First Edition LOB PSA 10. Yeah, that's crazy. I actually had an opportunity to buy this for 2,000. I wanna say three months ago, I didn't. Again, you can't buy everything. There's people who see this and go, oh no, oh no, I really need to buy everything now because it'll go up and up and up and I'll have missed the boat and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, sure, but it could also dip. And do you really want to have your entire net worth tied into cards? I don't think so. So I could have bought it. I could have made some nice profit already. It is what it is. You can't buy everything. It's best to buy the things you truly want first. And then later you can still go for these other nice gems. So Monster Reborn, once again, extremely iconic card, was banned for a very long time for being too powerful. But once again, it is more of a player card than a collector card. Now, obviously, once again, this does go into collections of people. But as a card, you don't show this to your typical casual fan or a Pokemon fan or a sports cards player and go, look, a Monster Reborn. It is not a blue eyes type card, is what I wanna say. Regardless, really cool card. Like, I love Monster Reborn. As a ex-player, well, I kinda still play, but you know, as a player who then quit and then came back, but now isn't much of a player, this card means a lot to me. So I can see it going up, especially because it's LOB. Like, if Monster Reborn was in MRL, this would probably be a completely different conversation. But since it is an ultra in LOB, super strong, iconic for all the players, the price makes sense. But it is not a monster. In my opinion, magic or spell or trap cards are never gonna beat monsters because people like their monsters, you know. Regardless, it is LOB. You can't argue with LOB. Now, the final thing I wanted to list in this video, because again, I don't want to make a video about it, is the dumbest auction I have seen. And that is for the 10,000 Dragon. So 2020, first edition, Battles of Legend Armageddon, 10,000 Dragon, PSA 10, sold for $3,150. Wow. A modern card. And people were going, oh, there's only 10,000 in the world, or there's only 1,000 in the world. Not true. But even if it were, that's a huge number. <laughs> like, holy hell. So what people don't understand yet about this card is that everyone has this in very good condition. If you check the pop reports on this card, over half of the 10,000 dragons that are sent in are tense. This means you can go right now to TCG player, buy it raw, get it graded, and have a solid chance at a 10. Raw for a thousand. So you could do this a few times and profit just like that. Why? Because all of these 10,000 dragons are instantly kept in great condition. And we saw this exact thing happen in Pokemon before. But people don't learn or don't do their research. People bought the Hidden Fates Charizard, got it graded, it went to 4,000. People bought it at 4,000 in that highest grade. Was it BGS 10 or PSA 10? I don't really remember. And then it crashed because people realized, damn, everyone has this. There's a bunch of them. You can literally go to eBay right now and get it. Right now, there's so many PSA 10s of it listed because the smart people realize this isn't rare. So the smart people got it graded, got a nice grade, quickly flip it, got some sick profits, fucking 3K on this piece of shit card. Right now, yeah, there is some money to be made, but once people catch on like, hey, I see how another one listed, another one, and another one, and another one, I expect this to be one of the first cards to actually go down. Long, 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 long term, maybe it'll go up because it is a point in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. You do have that, oh, it is the 10,000 card ever made and so forth. But really, right now, I feel that hype is already priced in. And once people realize, hey, there's so many out there, 
and they're all kept in great condition, I don't see this holding for too long. But that's just my take, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm just looking at patterns and this has happened in Pokemon before. So that's what scares me about this card. So yeah, that was a quick, I guess more could watch. We covered multiple cards because I don't want to do all time highs every fucking day. Like, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Ciao.